Hey hello again. Okay, so some languages back on my list and why. Uh, so just like I made that video yesterday and I was really pissed off, yes, because uh, um, we want to learn so many things and so sometimes we realize it's best, it's for the best that we make choices because life's about choices, right? So I made pretty good choices. Uh, so Kazakh, why the hell will I study Kazakh? I prefer to focus on, on Turkish, right? So I will focus on Turkish. Faroese, uh, why will I study Faroese when I can study Icelandic? And those choices were pretty good choices. Those choices were really uh, pretty good choices. Uh, Telugu, uh, why? Uh, if I can study uh, Tamil. Uh, Urdu, so similar to Hindi, uh, Bengali similar to Hindi, so I will study Hindi. And that, that those choices were, were okay. But then I realized that uh, some languages are worth studying. Uh, some of them due to pragmatic reasons. Uh, so they are pragmatic languages or sort of it. Uh, I mean, not exactly pragmatic languages uh, in the common sense of the using of the word. But... Um, there are they are languages that it's they are worth uh, studying and they are some kind of pragmatic somehow. So well, the first one I um, one of the languages that I had the doubts about dropping it is Cantonese. Uh, well, I believe that Cantonese is a very studied language, is an interesting language, and. Pragmatic somehow, I mean, not pragmatic in the sense of, uh, I live in Spain, here, Chinese people here speak Mandarin, but there are a lot of people studying Cantonese. In the United States, for instance, it's a very uh, useful language, Cantonese. And so, uh, since I have good resources, and my good friend, uh, Rafael Bialetz, he sent me Teach Yourself Cantonese, the original book, so, thanks my friend. And so why will I uh, drop a Cantonese? So I have good stuff, I have a PDF with colloquialism, a good slang, so Cantonese is back on my list uh, for good reasons. Then, uh, Welsh. Uh, well, uh, Scottish Gaelic, I dropped Scottish Gaelic because it's very similar to Irish, so it's better to study Irish. But Welsh, on the other hand, seems completely... Uh, seems completely different from, from Irish. And um, some polyglots study it, just like Richard Simcott, he, study, he speaks Welsh, and it's the most spoken one, I believe. Uh, there are a lot of people speaking Welsh, so I believe that it's worth giving it a try, at a low intermediate level, of course. So, uh, those two languages, I believe they're worth studying. And now, Maltese, um, I, I, of course I will study first Arabic, but today when I woke up, I don't know exactly why, but I had this feeling I had to had, I had to do it to, to have those languages back, uh, Maltese and Malagasy. Maltese, because um, it's not that it's a very primatic language, but uh, Malta is a very uh, touristic country, and so one day, for me, it's possible to visit Malta. So um, I believe the the the, the trips to there, uh, you can go there. Uh, it's not very expensive. So uh, I headed Maltese back to my list because it's it is possible for me to visit Malta one day. And so when that possibility appears, I will study Maltese. And then it shares a lot of common uh, words with Arabic. So first of all, I will need Ar I will have to learn Arabic. But seems like besides it's an interesting language and a different language. Just imagine Arabic's written in the, the Latin, Latin script, something like that. Malagasy, my good friend, my good friend Peter Brown, thanks my friend, he sent me the book uh, from Malagasy, the Malagasy Sampan. And it's a, it's a, I thought about that better and it's a very interesting language, completely different from what we used to. And so it's worth studying it on a low intermediate level too. So I already talked about Welsh, Cantonese, Maltese, and Malagasy. Then Quechua. Yesterday I was uh, 
I was making the um, asking these questions on Facebook and then and some guys told me well, what about Quechua and I said oh I just dropped it the, should I get it back on my list and said definitely there are a lot of people studying it and then I realized that uh, I re recall that well, in Portugal there are a lot of uh, Indians and I believe they're Quechuan Indians so it's a pragmatic language somehow it's not a pragmatic language that um, that I will come across a lot of people to, to speak, but I'm Portuguese, and when I go to Portugal in festivals and stuff like that, uh, there are those Indians there, and so I believe it's worth giving a try, there is a good book to study Quechua, and um, I believe I will have the possibility to practice this language, so if I want to learn so many languages that it's, they are hard to practice, if I have the possibility to practice this language, uh, I had it back to my, on my list, oh yes, I did. And that was why. And now, Bulgarian. Well, um, I believe it's easier to, to learn Bulgarian than to learn much easier than, than learning Russian, for instance. And so I don't, I don't see why shouldn't I study um, on a low intermediate level. Besides, I know a Bulgarian native speaker here. Uh, it's not that I know him very well, but I know him and uh, I might come across him and I might practice this language. So uh, this is the main reason why uh, I decided to have Bulgarian back on my list. And Fula and Lingala. Well, I'm not sure about uh, Fula. I'm not sure about Fula yet. Uh, but Lingala, uh, I have the FESI course and I have the FESI course for, for both. And the one for for Lingala as audio and so um, I believe it's worth studying. Fula I don't have audio but uh, it's a language that I recall somebody uh, I met at, in Portugal he told me that he spoke this this language and I believe there are a lot of people speaking this language so pragmatic somehow so that's why I decided to to head them back I'm not sure about Fula yet but maybe and then there is the other another one. I want to learn uh, intermediate upper intermediate Latvian, but then why not Lithuanian? But instead of studying with teach yourself in colloquial, I will only study with colloquial. So uh, I will need less time to to study this language, and my goal will be instead of intermediate, will be low intermediate. Besides, there are people studying this language. Moses McCormick, for instance, and I speak with him uh, on on um, on Facebook. And by the time I know some Lithuanian, I will uh, it will be a pragmatic language somehow. So that's it. Welsh, Cantonese, Fula Lingala, Bulgarian, Maltese, Malagasy, Quechua, Lithuanian. All of them have their reasons why they're back on my list. Uh, so it makes seventy six. I want to put it on 75, so I don't know. Uh, Fula, I don't know what will I, what will I do with Fula. And then I have this other question, which is um, Greenlandic or Inuktitut, because I bought the first Greenlandic uh, DVD, but it kind of sucks. So will I be stupid enough to buy the other one? So what should I do? Should I, uh, should I be stupid enough and buy the other one, hoping it's, it's much better? Uh, or should I uh, should I study Inuktitut online instead? And that's it. See you guys then.